Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to How Long is a Piece of String? Um, this is advertised as a family-friendly show, um, which means two things. Firstly, if there are any professors of advanced metrology in the room, they're unlikely to learn very much. And secondly, um, there will be um, required audience participation. Um, should the audience decide not to participate, we're going to be in and out of here within seconds. Okay? I'll just, so you bear as much of the responsibility for that as I do. I just wanted to make that clear. Now, my granddad always used to say to me that a piece of string is twice as long as half a piece of string. And I always used to think that, that was a really clever answer until I came to work at NPL. And then a bunch of metrologists came and said to me, well, actually, do you know, that's not necessarily true. Um, but if we get into that, um, we could be here all day. So rather than asking how long is a piece of string, we're going to ask how long is this piece of string? Here it is. And this is where the audience participation starts. Um, because I'd like somebody to be brave enough to shout out a guess. Kenny. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, I here we go, here we go. To keep going, I, I think I heard a foot being called out. <laughs> How many, sir? 28. <laughs> One more for good luck and then we'll stop. Nine, nine inches, right. Now, now, clearly, judging by the two columns of responses, we do have a generational range of people <laughs> in the room at the moment. Um, the, the, people, the people on the front row, I would suggest, will be much more used to these units of measurement than possibly these. We didn't have any rods or perches as guesses, so, that, so, that, so that's quite useful. Um, at NPL, we do sort of semi-insist on, on being metric, I'm afraid, so, so I'm, I'm going to concentrate on these, if you don't mind. Um, and I, now, if, if there were, and I, it's a very conditional thing, this, if there were a prize for the person with the best guess, then we would need a way of establishing whose guess was best. So what would we need to do? We'd need to measure the length of the piece of string. Right. Um, second bit of audience participation. Would anybody be prepared to measure the length of the piece of string? I'm trying not to look deliberately at young people in front, but if they were to volunteer, that would be marvellous. Anyway, oh, fantastic. Oh, you, oh, come up. Yes, please do. Right. Here is a special NPL ruler for you, madam, and one piece of string. And you can take your time because I've got 15 minutes to kill, to be honest. <laughs> um, th is there... Oh, yes, young man, just stay, just stay there for a minute. There's your NPL ruler. Now, I don't know if you can see it at the back, but I've been particularly cruel. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. I'm done. Are you done? You're done? 26. What I meant to say was don't say the answer yet. <laughs> That's my fault. That's nothing to do with you. Uh, 26 centimetres. Thank you very much indeed. Well done. Round of applause, I would have thought. Um, when I said I was cruel in, that, in asking you, in giving you these to do that, what did I mean? I, 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 a, it's a floppy ruler, and B, it's not as long as the piece of string. Um, so bear that in mind, sir, when you measure the length of the piece of string. And you are allowed to call the answer out, because um, that's how we're doing it now. <laughs> Do, <laughs> then, we're, then we're straight out the door. <laughs> okay. 29 and a half. Whoa! Yeah, two budding scientists, and um, a checker with a different um, with a different instrument. Anybody? Would you like to check against that? Now, 
This time it's slightly different because I've provided the gentleman with a, with a measuring instrument that is long enough for the purpose, so that's a bit more helpful. Twenty-eight centimetres. So this person's currently feeling quite smug, um, <laughs> and um, and that person is probably reasonably happy as well. Um, and unless anybody's um, better at I am than doing the conversion, these people don't have a clue what's going on at the moment. <laughs> uh, th thank, thank you very much indeed. Now. Um, the point being that all we're doing is measuring a piece of string. How hard can it be? And yet, um, we have got three significantly different answers. So when we measure, we don't end up at the truth all the time. And there are many different reasons why that could affect why those three numbers are different. And you can categorise those reasons into three main bits. My apologies, um, but you contributed to that, um, and in particular, what you were doing. Um, there's the string itself, and there's the measuring instrument, as I think some members of the audience have already guessed. Um, it's quite hard to line the string up exactly, harder than you would think. Also, if somebody gives you a ruler that is less long than the piece of string, that doesn't help because you don't have to do some kind of shuffling affair. Um, the string itself, I'm not sure that it's that clear where the ends of the piece of string are. I mean, this, piece, this end for it is really frayed, and that end is cut at an angle. Um, so where is the end of the piece of string? Also, the length of the piece of string depends on, on how taut it is. It's a stretchy piece of string. Um, you presumably would like it to be a bit taut, because otherwise it doesn't hang in a straight line. But then if you make it hang in a straight line, the more hard you try and make it hang in a straight line, the longer it is. So I'm not convinced, to kind of cut to the chase, how long is a piece of string, I'm not convinced that as defined, that string even has a length. It might have a length under certain conditions, if we define where the ends are and how much tension there is in it, um, but I don't think I've asked a very fair question. And what's even less fair, and what the reason that there aren't any real prizes for the, for the guessing, um, is that those three measuring instruments, and for heaven's sake, if you know anybody that's coming to the later show, please don't tell them this. Um, these measuring instruments are not um, coincidental. Um, that one has been expanded by 5% on a photocopier, which is why it's floppy and stuck on card on the back, because you can't buy them like this. Um, so the measuring instrument contributes to the fact that these numbers are different. And I urge you, next time you go home and use anything with a, with a measuring scale on it, I urge you to ask yourself, how do I know that the spacings on the scale are the right spacing apart? I don't mean to provoke an existential crisis, <laughs> but if you think about that, there's no obvious way that you do know, except for NPL. Hooray! Um, those three things contribute to a thing called uncertainty, um, which is a technical term. It's the technical term for the fact that you're not sure what the real value is. Um, and so whereas um, you might say something like that before today, um, hopefully after today, you'll realise that scientists don't usually talk in those terms. They would say some... It's weasel, it's weasel words is what it is. Um, a scientist would say something like, well, we don't know what the length of the string is, but we can be this sure that it's within this kind of range. And there are technical ways of working out both that number and those numbers, which we're not going to go into today. The job of a metrologist when doing the measurement is to make that number as high as possible and that range as small as possible so that you can say, right, we're pretty certain it's in a 
fairly small range. What's that got to do with life? Well, it's got everything to do with life because um, when you go to the petrol station, it would be nice if the petrol pump that flashed up 84 pounds 67p um, and how many litres it was actually gave you the right amount of litres. That would be good. It would be nice if the people um, making the aeroplane that you fly to on holiday measured the bits right and stuck them together in the right place. Um, and it would also be good if when you measure out 400 grams of sugar to make a Victoria sponge cake, um, that the spacing on the scale does what it says so that 400 grams really means 400 grams. And that thing, the spacing on the scale and being confident that 400 grams really means 400 grams is what we're all about here at MPL. And it's a thing called traceability and this is how it works. Sort of. There's you making your Victoria sponge cake, and there is a one kilogram bag of sugar, presumably from which you're going to decant 400 grams. Um, now, NPL does not go round to all the sugar manufacturers and check that every single bag of sugar actually has a kilogram in it. But the, but the sugar manufacturers are responsible for dishing out the right amount of sugar. So what they will do is they will measure the way, I'm going to use the word way, so let's not get into any mass and weight arguments here. Um, they will weigh the sugar and they will check their weighing instruments and this is where it gets kind of weird because they need to check their weighing instruments against weighing instruments that are more accurate in order to be confident in the comparison. And they might have one of those more accurate weighing instruments in their special room called more accurate weighing instrument room. <laughs> but then the question becomes, how can we be confident that the more accurate weighing instrument is telling us something that we can trust? And the only answer to that is that we need to compare that more accurate weighing instrument with an ultra accurate weighing instrument, which the sugar manufacturer doesn't own. So they have to outsource that comparison and they do that to a place called a calibration laboratory. Now, and then you get to the point where, and you can see where we're going with this, this big, uh, if there isn't an end point to this, it'll be the longest talk you've ever been to. <laughs> because, because we ha then have to compare the ultra-accurate weighing instrument with one of even greater accuracy. And at some point that chain has to stop. And the point is that it stops here, in this building and not just for weight, but for all sorts of things. Um, and you'll notice that the talk has gone off length and into weight, um, but that's because I have a pretty picture, and here we go, here are, I forgot to press the button in time, so here are lots of comparisons, a few comparisons at, at calibration laboratories, a fewer calibrations here, um, and then it's all based on this. And you can go and see this on the ground floor in Module 7. If you use your maps today, ground floor, Module 7, that is the UK kilogram. And every bag of sugar, and now I'm not pretending that every bag of sugar in the country is actually accurately a kilogram, but I am pretending that every bag of sugar has its mass traceable back to that one artefact which is about 150 yards away, roughly in that direction, and down a bit. Sorry to point, sir. It's not just mass that we do this for. Um, anybody that was here for Anne Curtis's talk, um, just before me, and if you weren't, do come back, because it's brilliant. Uh, she's doing it again later on. Uh, we'll recognise that. That is um, a strontium ion end cap. That is going to be the most accurate timekeeper in the world and, well, part of it, and will um, lose or gain approximately one second of time um, in the lifetime of the universe. So, so, this, so this place, uh, NPL, the, our National Measurement Institute, um, is responsible for having measurements with the lowest possible uncertainty that we can get in order that the end user ends up with products that are doing their job properly. It's not just me that asks how long is a piece of string. 
Um, BBC's Horizon programme did the same thing. And there we have um, two experts in the field in the middle who work at NPL, Andrew Lewis and Ben Hughes. On the left is uh, an Oxford mathematician, Marcus de Sotoy, and on the right is a comedian, Alan Davis. And they came with a similar piece of... It wasn't that piece of string. Um, but you can see the piece of string that they measured um, because it's in, the, uh, it's in the foyer in a little, in a little, um, in a little case. Um, and uh, there we go, it's been measured with Andrew Lewis's laser tracker. I haven't had the nerve to say to Andrew Lewis, who knows a lot more than I do about length measurements, that possibly the, the, the piece of string as defined doesn't really have a length. I haven't been brave enough to say that. Um, but, uh, but if you go to the foyer, um, that's, um, that's a piece of string. And notice that it's measured to the nearest one thousandth of a millimetre. Um, that is not the limit for length measurements. Um, we can measure, I, I was talking to Andrew last week and he was telling me um, that they can now measure lengths so accurately in certain ranges um, that, the, that the limiting factor is not knowing accurately enough what the temperature is because slight fluctuations in temperature will actually expand or shrink, not just the thing you're measuring, but your measuring instrument. So not knowing the temperature is the limiting factor on some of the length measurements that we do here. He says also that when we solve that problem, the next limiting factor will be the refractive index of air, which then will make the lasers not work. Um, well, they'll work, but you won't know, you won't know exactly... Um, exactly what the, uh, what, the wa what the wavelength of the laser light is. So there we are, that is how long is a piece of string. I need to let you go so that we can safely evacuate the room. It's been a pleasure talking to you, thank you very much indeed.